Hey everyone, this is Scott from CertMedia.com. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the Cloudflare EPO or Automatic Platform Optimization. I'm gonna be going over what it is. I'm also gonna be talking about how it impacts if you're already using a caching solution, and I'll show you how to set it up for your own website. Now keep in mind, for those of you on the free plan, this is a $5 a month cost that you will have to pay for. If you're on the pro plan or higher, this will automatically be included but I'll show you how to set it up and it's the same process either way. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I'm gonna be putting out my daily driver tips blog, but I'm also gonna show you a bit of a before and briefly talk about what this is. The APO has two benefits, but really only one of them matters. It has edge HTML caching, which means it'll copy your website's HTML and serve it from Cloudflare's Ed. Previously, unless you were trying to use workers or you were trying to use the page rule system, it, it caused a lot of issues. If you were logged into your website, what would happen is, is you would just not get your admin toolbar. You wouldn't be able to use Elementor or really anything that could identify you as being logged in because there was no way to ignore cookies. The only way to ignore cookies previously required the business level plan or higher, which was $200 a month. That's completely absurd. The benefits to caching your HTML other than reducing your TTFB and improving the overall performance is if you have users from different countries, they get now served a much faster experience. So for instance, I ran GT Matrix. I don't care about the fully loaded time about any of those details right now. Here's what we care about. This is your HTML response time. From the US, I ran this from the Dallas server here. It was 168.4 milliseconds. That's really good. Fast server response time. It is served from Varnish Cache and there's a page cache through WordPress Rocket as the fallback for this particular website. Then I tested this location from Australia, and it was 222 milliseconds. Not that slow, but again, this depends very much on where your server is and the speed of your server. And then I also tested one from China, and then that was 362 milliseconds. The benefits to using the APO is all of these users should have relatively the same response time because they will be getting served cached versions from the location closest to them. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to set this up. There are technically two ways to set this up. You can use the setup where you don't install the Cloudflare plugin, or you can install the Cloudflare plugin, and I recommend, in this case, using Cloudflare's plugin. The documentation is pretty straightforward. The biggest reason that you want to use it with the Cloudflare plugin really comes down to not so much this nonsense, but it, it will decrease the amount of work that your origin server has. If you have the WordPress plugin installed, it basically never needs to touch your server unless the Cloudflare plugin on your server says, hey, the cache needs to be purged, something was updated. And there is automatic cache management. For those of you who were using something like WordPress Rocket or Swift where you had built in automatic cache management and it could clear the Cloudflare cache, you're gonna need to disable those add-ons to get the most out of this because they're not set up yet to really work with APO. So it's gonna run into a bit of an issue and just to get the full effect of it because it is $5 a month if you're using the free plan, you're gonna need, wanna get the most for it and to reduce your server load. Now, this will work with WooCommerce, but keep in mind, not every plugin will work with this. It's a fairly new system. If you notice you have a plugin and the cookies are not being ignored when they should be, you can go over to the community forums and suggest it from Cloudflare and their dev team has been super responsive at adding them. There's virtually no settings in here. You cannot exclude cookies on your own. It's completely automatic. So let's jump in and go through the setup real quick. So you gotta find your domain obviously and you have to pay for it. There'll be a purchase button here. Just go ahead, put in your credit card information, whatever you use and pay for it. Then it wants you to install their WordPress plugin and we're going to do that real quick. So we're just gonna install Cloudflare and click activate. This has been updated fairly recently. We're gonna be using the latest version as a time of recording. So then you're going to go to the settings and you're going to go to Cloudflare. You are going to need the all important API key. So just stick your email address in there and we're going to fetch my API key real quick. Okay, we're back and I managed to solve the CAPTCHA. I had to go through it twice, but H CAPTCHA is always very finicky for me. And you're just gonna copy that nice API key and you're gonna hit the save button. 
It's gonna go ahead and do the background work to make sure, hey, this is actually for your website. It's gonna match the zone ID. And then it's gonna go ahead and give you the nice Cloudflare screen. Now, in here, you can now activate the automatic platform optimization. Once you do so, it should reflect in your Cloudflare panel, and it does. The WordPress plugin has now been successfully detected for daily driver tips. One other thing I recommend doing is going over and then you can enable auto purge content on update. I highly recommend enabling this option. Just go ahead and enable it. And the reason you're going to want this is because otherwise what you're going to have happen is if you don't auto purge content, so you publish a new post or you update a post, it will not clear from cache right away. So there will be a bit of a delay. By purging only the posts that is necessary, and this will do the logic for it, it's going to reduce cache misses, which is when the cache is not, when the website or the page in this case is not stored in cache and the server has to then send a copy to Cloudflare for them to cache. This will just make sure only the most important pages, the posts that yourself that you're updating, your blog page, your category, if you use categories, and your home page get updated. The good news is those all tend to be pages that get hit quite often. Once that's done, we're now just going to visit our home page just so we can get a gist. Because I'm logged in, I'm automatically going to bypass it. That makes sense. But what we're now going to do is run our GT Matrix test. So we had 168.4 milliseconds in Dallas. We're going to go ahead and we're going to run it. We're going to hope that we don't need to run it multiple times, particularly because GT Matrix has been a bit busy today. And another, and another note I want to point out is if you use Pingdom, Pingdom will not pick up on this. It's for some reason automatically bypassed from the way they run the test. So real quick, we can tell that the Cloudflare cache status was a hit. So it only reduced it by about 20 milliseconds. And I have a very fast server in a Dallas data center and my, cat, and my response time was still reduced. That's a good win in my book. I honestly can't really complain about that kind of result. Now we're going to look at our global results. So we're gonna go ahead and test it from the China location again. We started with 362 milliseconds, so we're gonna run it. Hopefully we don't have to run it multiple times, and I'm gonna start the one from the Australian Sydney server, which is the one that's taken the longest for me. We're gonna just give it another run to, and it's still lower than what it was before, in the exact same data center where I have the server located. So that's still a good thing. And the other benefit is because it's on Cloudflare's edge, it reduces the load to your server virtually to zero. If you find that during heavy times, your blog or your news magazine website, whatever it may be, and your server is getting hit very hard after you publish a new story, this will greatly reduce the impact to your server so long as you don't need to ignore, you don't need to ignore any important cookies that are automatically added. And this will increase your cache hit status to Cloudflare from the sites that I have deployed this on to around, I get normally 60% on daily driver tips for reference. I've been seeing 90 plus percent depending on the type of website and audience. So we're gonna look, go ahead and look at this Hong Kong location and we're just gonna see this is probably a cache, so this was a cache hit, but the response time from GT Matrix looks to have been pretty bad. We're just gonna give it another run through. It wouldn't ever make sense for this to result in a lower response time, solely because the distance between the two servers is physically reduced. And the Sydney location is going to be backed up for a while. There is another benefit to this and it optimizes the Google fonts. I'm actually not a really big fan of that. What it does is it'll take Google fonts and inline the styling for them. And my problem with that, see that's a much better, 200 milliseconds when it was originally 362 milliseconds for the exact same package before the APO. And this applies to virtually any location, all kinds of countries. If you have your server say in Singapore and you have an Australian audience, which is common with SiteGround customers, this would greatly reduce your response time to them as well. And I'm, I'm overall just really pleased with the system they have added, but I, I kind of feel like this is very much what their old workers scripts were, but it just takes that work out of it. It's not bad by any means though. When you're reducing your response time to international audiences, there's not really a lot of good ways to do so. If you were trying to use workers, then you obviously have to worry about paying for your worker scripts, which could be quite expensive. 
depending on how many you had and how many websites you were running and the amount of audiences that were using them. You could have used the old page rule method, which I pretty much determined to not be really worth your time unless you're on the business plan because it would cause more headaches than it solved. And wow, 187 milliseconds. That's pretty identical to what you're seeing in the Texas server where my actual server is located. And you know, we got this one, which is still taking forever, which is quite common when you're testing from the Australian server on GT Matrix. I don't know why that server's always hammered, but we're seeing great reduction and I virtually eliminated the load from my server. I'm very pleased with APOs. Just keep in mind that the $5 a month is per site. If you own many small websites that don't get a lot of traffic, it can be quite expensive. Also, and this is very important, this is not a replacement for having good web hosting. I feel like users use Cloudflare and stuff to kind of mask a bigger issue of the web hosting not being good. So if you're on GoDaddy business hosting, which is basically just glorified shared hosting on their platform, and your response time is terrible, this is not going to really fix your problem completely at the end of the day. If you're getting terrible response times, if somebody misses the cache in Cloudflare, which can happen, especially if you update a lot or you're using something like WooCommerce and they have to bypass it to check out, you're gonna get hit with some really slow response times still. This will reduce the load on the server, but it's not a perfect fix. So if you're using a good host like Keensta, WP Engine, or SiteGround, or Cloudways, you're still going to benefit from those platforms. Don't think that you can now substitute bad hosting with the APO. This is just a good complement to reduce the load on the server and to reduce the response time for the users when it can. And there are a lot of times when it can't, during checkout, any time a cookie's placed, when comments are added on WordPress posts because there's a cookie to bypass it to show users that their comments been published or that it's moderating. Things of that nature are going to easily get it bypassed. And if you rely on PHP sessions for some strange reason, none of this is really going to help you because then any functionality behind the PHP session will just not work. If you use this on your website, please just show, show your results in the comments. It's honestly a great five bucks uh, a month for it, especially if you have an international audience, just be careful and don't buy cheap hosting because you now have an APO to reduce your response time. It's not going to fix all of your issues. We're gonna double check. All right, so let's see what this Sydney response time was. Hope maybe it wasn't even cached. Okay, so 194 milliseconds and our before was 222. I'm gonna count that as a win, uh, even though it probably, no, it did result in a hit, which is awesome. And it's just gonna keep a very consistent and low response time. All right, and that was everything you need to know about the Cloudflare automatic platform optimization for WordPress. It's honestly a very simple and yet very useful bit of tech. It works off their workers platform and it's very easy to get very strong improvement on your WordPress websites. Even those of you on e-commerce websites like WooCommerce, you can still see very noticeable gains just by enabling it for the non, for the users who don't buy anything, either abandon the page or just don't check out. If you have any questions about it or whether you feel it's needed for your own website, you can ask in the comments below. Also make sure to check out our new Facebook group. You can go ahead and join it. I'll put a link in the description. And that just allows us to ask questions a bit more in a community type fashion. And that way it's not just me trying to respond to every YouTube comment. As always, if you have any questions though, please feel free to ask. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye.